time for another Coffee with Kilroy, or what I like to call beverage in a book. My beverage? Well, it's coffee. Ooh, might have something in that coffee. And the book? Well, it's not exactly a book. It's kind of a book. It's Panzerschreck. Issue 19, summer of 2021. I believe this is the latest installment of uh, the Panzer Shrek series from Minden Games, which is kind of a game magazine. Um, it has some articles in it, and it usually has at least a couple of games. I think some issues might have up to three games that are in the book, and I kind of consider this a book because it's got a little bit of a binding, uh, and it's very similar to some of the other offerings from Minden Games, uh, like the one I just covered, U-Boat Captain, which is actually a version of that is in this. This is the advanced edition. I wonder how different it is from what is contained in here, but, uh, you know, their, their battle game book series are kind of little books, uh, not all these are battle game books, but several of them are. And these are what you can get. You can order these inserts or these uh, up, uh, upgrade kits, which gives you some counters. It gives you a sheet on a little bit thicker stock, and you have to cut everything out. And, but it might give you reference cards on a little bit thicker stock. This is for the Great War Salvo, which goes with this one here. Uh, which it has all the materials in here, but you either have to uh, copy them or cut them out or what you want to do. And I, you know, I never deface a book, so that's just not my style. And they have this for Panzer, uh, for the Panzer Shrek as well. In fact, I ordered it for this just to get components for this. And then I've got extra components in here. Overkill. Yeah, probably. All right, so you get two war games in this. You get U-Boat Captain, which we've we've seen that already. Uh, Battle of uh, uh, Cajamarca, which is the um, uh, Spanish uh, expedition into uh, Latin America. There's war game reviews in here, uh, and then you know so there's some other articles and stuff. So I thought we'd do a page through of this. This is kind of like, you know, the magazines that uh, you see from Decision Games, the Strategy and Tactics, and like, in that it has articles in it, but then it is a book as well. This one is more dedicated to uh, games, I believe, as were Strategy and Tactics and other Decision Game magazines like World of War and now, the now defunct uh, Modern War had historical articles in them. Uh, this one, I think, really focuses more on games, which is kind of similar to C3I and um, uh, War Gamer and some of the other uh, other magazines from the past. For some reason, I'm I'm blanking on what uh, what uh, Compass's uh, house organ is right now. So because I just I just saw that today. Anyway, um, so let's page through this. Let's uh, have a sip of your coffee or whatever you're drinking. Ooh. Put something in that one. Anyway, the um, as I said, this is published by Minden Games. This is a small publisher. I believe they're out of Canada, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, what you have here is Games of Strategy. Whatever your interest in wargaming, Panzerstruck has you covered. Each issue contains articles, variants, game reviews, and items of interest for players of all stripes, particularly those who value solitaire play and historical fun. Its classic content is designed to warm the hearts of historical board game veterans. This issue uh, of award-winning Panzerstruck, yeah, this, I think, won a uh, Charles S. Roberts Award at one point. Um, this issue of the award-winning Panzerstruck is heavily on game reviews while delivering gaming articles and variants of interest as well. In addition, this edition, our largest ever, contains two complete historical games. Some of their other ones, I think, contain... Uh, I think they've had a, up to like three games maybe in a in an issue. Uh, the two solitaires uh, war games in this issue are U-Boat Captain. We talked about that. And Battle of uh, Kajamarka 1532 is a solitaire tactical mini sim recreation of Spanish conquistadors Pizarro's conquest of the Incas. Out number 40 to 1, the 160-man Spanish contingent prevailed and the Inca Empire came to an abrupt end. I've actually uh, visited his uh, grave. He's buried in a convent, or at least was originally buried in a convent in 
uh, Lima, Peru. Uh, I was down there on business and uh, took a tour of the, of the catacombs of this convent and uh, quite eerie, but uh, he has a, a grave stone down there. Very interesting. Anyway, so let's uh, look in this book here. It, it's about the same size. It actually is the exact same size as their uh, battle game books or their other book offerings. Uh, however, this one's a little bit thicker, as you can see there. Let's get in here. One thing about these books, they're, they're, the way they're bound, they're kind of hard to get open. So if you do want to copy stuff out of it, you're probably going to have to break the bind a little bit to get it on a copier to you know copy some of the components and what have you. How to use this book. Uh, author board game books have this. So th this does qualify as a war game book because it says it's how to use this book. Um, this is kind of an in-between a book and a magazine. Um, opening rounds, this is like the editor's uh, just opening thoughts on things. And uh, Gary Graber is the owner of Minden and the designer. And uh, I don't know if he's done other games from other designers, but most of these designs are, are his, I believe. Great War Salvo, I, I recommend that one. I do like that one. Here's a uh, review, Profile and Courage, a High Flying Dice. So the, they're, they're actually reviewing something that's not part of the Minden series. So that's, that's interesting there. And Retro in Review. Some interesting stuff there. Making the Sausage, Red Dragon Rising Deluxe versus Program 99-5. This is an article by Ty Bamba. Talking about his Red Dragon Rising uh, series or game, or don't know if that's his game. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's his game. I think I've got a version of that. There's Masada, I have that. Uh, Lost Victories by Hans Cording, article in here. So you're getting, I mean, again, this is somewhat like a magazine, although the articles are a little bit shorter. You know, they're only a, a two, three pages long, so not uh, a lot like a magazine. Plus, this is a smaller book. Uh, Contest 19. It's got some, here's Veltcraig. See, they do other games than just these book games. I think this is... Uh, don't know if this is a uh, bag or box. The only thing I've ever gotten from uh, Minden is like baggy, is these book games and then like Ziploc uh, type games. I've got like a Psalm game from them on that. Here's the U-Boat Campaign. I think this is in U-Boat Captain here in this version, I think. Maybe, maybe not. Yeah, so that's in there, so. Uh, although th that's considered the advanced version, everything that's in there might be in this book here. So there's some, and here's the U-Boat Captain game. So you have all everything here. So this is nice having this book, because uh, if I like this U-Boat Captain, there's I've got a couple of different references to, to refer to and keep stuff open if I want to. This looks like it's got most of the stuff that was in the other game. Maybe Maybe it's missing some of the advanced rules. No, I think it's got. I think it's got. It's got the optional rules. Hmm. We got the same uh, uh, submarine charts in here. I'll put a um, link to my Coffee with Kilroy on U-boat captain, so you can take a look at that. So I don't have to necessarily go over this again. Uh, Electronic Advanced Squad Leader Rulebook, Multi-Man Publishing. So talking about that. Game reviews. Here's a uh, Barbosa. From Diffraction Entertainment, a review by Robert G. Smith there. That one's a little bit longer. That's like four pages. Apocalypse Road by GMT Games, which is a post-apocalyptic Mad Max type uh, game. Gazala 1942. So there are some reviews in here, here for Psy 1919 by GMT Games. That was by David Newport. Battle of the Psalm, that's the one I have. Uh, one of the other, I don't think, I, I don't have it as a battle game book. I think I bought the, the original, which is in a Ziploc. That's an interesting game. Then uh, some more. All right, here's Stalingrad Besieged. 
Storm in the West, Escape to Nowhere. So you got quite a few reviews here, and they're, you know, Couple pages, at least couple pages. You know, some, there's a, I saw a couple like one page, but they're on the average about two to three pages. Dark Sands. And it's kind of you get an article, you get a little bit of the example of the counters and the map, so that's that's all good. Battle of, for Germany. This is the first Panzer Shrek I've gotten, so uh, this is a little bit different. Stalingrad, the uh, Leather Factory. This is a um, a game from uh, Minden Games. Panzer Chief Extra. See, these are these extras that they have. And uh, I think I've said this in previous videos too, but uh, Minden Games has a lot of different kind of games. But a lot of their games, or at least I think their sweet spot is naval games. They have several naval, I think they have at least two or three different naval series of games or rule sets. And then they have a lot of naval games so i think that's something that he uh uh kind of a sweet spot for him so this is some extras here so if you have panzer strip then you've got some extras here um looks like you got a revised table here and then you've got some extra counters here again their counters are you know you have to copy them and then put, put them in here what i would, would do with stuff like this is i'd copy them onto a sticker um sheet or a, a straight, like a label, a clear label sheet, and then I would put that on some cardstock, and then I cut it out from there. That's usually how I make counters. Uh, just varies on what kind of cardstock you want to use. But if you get one of those, uh, there's there's labels that are about the size of this page here. Like the, there's two halves of the page, like this, and then you can just copy it on a, a, a label sheet, and then pull off the label label put it on some card stock or whatever counter stock you want to use and then you cut it out but you have to cut stuff out and here's some uh uh a ship t uh um registers or ship ratings here's a log sheet for some of the different ships for panzer sh shift <laughs> ship man that's easy for you to say man i need another drink maybe it's what i have in my drink that uh maybe it's what i have in my coffee that is making me mess up the words so these are ship ratings for panzer shift there we go say that fast three times uh covid classics a review of sorts panzer dice eastern front rule book and game huh this looks like a print and play panzer dice I need to look. This is available at War Game Vault. Uh, a lot of, I think, men and games are available at War Game Vault since they're all kind of paper-friendly or PDF-friendly type games for the most part. Um, I've gotten a few things from War Game Vault. Be interesting to see in your comments how many people out there go to the War Game Vault or buy a lot of stuff off War Game Vault. I'd love to hear your thoughts on that. This looks like this available at War Game Vault for $1.50. It's an 11-page PDF. It looks like a roll and write. Um, huh. I might just have to uh, get into that because to, to, to quench my thirst for war game books. Did you hear that, Wayne? Uh, I might have to go into the PDF business. Here's short takes. Variants for older war games. Ah, Air Force. Silly scenario for a stupid war. That's interesting here. Autumn Mist. I don't know if I'm wild about this background uh, that they this background that they used for this page here. It's kind of hard to read some of this stuff here, especially if you're making copies of this for for a variant. Interesting. Here's games available from Minden. Here's some advertisements. Uh, as you can see, a lot of naval games here. One, two, three, uh, four. Five, six, six games out of this sheet here are, are naval games. And, and I think uh, these two, uh, this one and this one have naval scenarios in it. I mean, it's air games, but they're attacking, I think, shipping at some point. So interesting there. Then you get this is the second game in here, Battle of Kajamarka. Probably pronouncing that wrong. Apologize especially to the residents of that town. 1532, solitaire mini-sim. This is a mini-sim. 
So you got your components here. There's Pizarro, the man himself. There's your rules, only uh, looks like two pages of rules. Here's your map and uh, another advertisement. Then here's your counters that you need. And you can order, again, you can, if you order the uh, 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 com component kit, I guess, I don't know what they call it, for this Panzer uh, Shrek, then you'll get all these, you'll get this on harder stock. So you can just cut this out. So you don't have to do what I do is, what I normally do is, Copy this onto a label and then peel it, then cut it and all that. You just get it on a harder stock and use it that way. Um, here's some back issues of Panzer Shrek 17 and 18. Uh, as you can see here, these have three game issue and this has a three game issue as well. Then some more, oh, here's some more rules for that. Then here's the Incan, Inca Aggression Index there. And some more rules. So there's a little, there's maybe like four pages of rules here. And then you got your Inca hit roster. And uh, Inca just reminds me, Inca Cola was uh, something I had down in Peru and and enjoyed. It's very yellow. Uh, you got some here's some optional rules for the game. And then this is interesting. An analysis of games published in Panzer Shrek. So games by period. And so this is this is this is the latest issue. This is 19. So they've done 19 issues of this. They've got 29 World War II games, 10 World War I, um, American Civil War, 19th Century VI, Ancient II, Napoleonic II, Medieval II, Modern I. Games by scale. Tactical 24, Operational 18, Abstract 6, Strategic 4. Games by theater, land 30, naval 13, well that surprises me, uh, abstract 6 and air 3, games by players, 26 solitaire, 24 two-player, and two multiplayer. And then designers, uh, Gary Graber, who's the, the the main person for Men in Games, 43, James Meldrum, 3, uh, Peter DeWild, 2, Paul Rohrball, uh, he's a well-known person from print and play, I think he's he might be high, flying dice games or high flying dice. Uh, Neil Graber, James Gordon, and Unknown, one each. Unknown, I'm going to take credit for that one. Uh, and you got a full listing of the titles appearing in Panzer Shrek. See Panzer Shrek 18, pages 89 to 92. So you got to go get page, you got to go get Panzer Shrek 18, just to figure out what games are available. And then you got short takes here. Here's talking about Africa Core, and then The Last Word. So, editor designer Gary Graber and drawings by Jones. All right. So there you have it. That is what you get in a book, magazine, whatever you want to call this, of Panzer Shrek issue 19. I thought this would be. I, I thought I'd try one of these because I've been starting to collect a few of the Minden games and and enjoy uh, some of the uh, simplicity. Uh, and, but yet enjoyable nature of them. I mean, they're, 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 they're a lot of the games are, are solo. And so, uh, and they're in these, in these solo war game books, but they, uh, they play very well. The rules aren't that complex, but you still get a little bit of a feel of the, uh, of the conflict or the period or the type of tactics, uh, albeit generally abstract. Or, or abstracted in in nature, but they're games, right? And and I think that's the intent of of men in games is to so have something that that's a game, uh, that that deals with war and conflict. Hence, a war game, right? But uh, I I enjoy them. Uh, so this is uh, uh, an interesting publisher. Uh, this I can see this is not for everyone. This is not probably heavy enough for a lot of war gamers. Uh, and um, it might be too abstract for somebody that wants to get into the history of some of these conflicts, but I, I think there's a niche for this. I think there's some. There's some. I think I see where some of these games could appeal to some people. So, um, and I some of them appeal to me. So, thought I'd share that with you all. And this is interesting. It gets some reviews, so it's kind of a. Uh, Kind of a review magazine as well. They're just not review. They're not exclusively reviewing uh, Minden games. I, I don't know how many of the Minden games they kind of covered in here, in their articles. I saw at least maybe a couple, 
if not more, but the, most of them look like they were going, dealing with other games uh, published by other publishers, which is, you know, always interesting and getting a different point of view. So that's what I have for you today. Uh, again, love to know your thoughts. Does anybody subscribe to this? I don't know if this is a subscription, but does anybody pick these up? Does anybody uh, play Minden Games? Is anybody interested in Minden Games? Um, love to hear your thoughts and comments on it. As I said, I find them somewhat interesting and uh, are kind of a fun little thing to pull out. Uh, it, it, a lot of their games are kind of filler games. I mean, filler games are is a concept in Euro games and and their general board gaming hobby, but these are kind of filler war games in some respect. Uh, which you know most solitaire games are tend to be kind of filler war games, uh, especially the smaller ones. Uh, but um, Anyone, anyway, that's what I have for you today. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate it. Uh, drop some comments. Love to know what you think about this or any of the other things that I'm covering. Uh, love to see a dialogue started. But uh, but most importantly, just thanks for stopping by and spending some time with me. Uh, hope you guys have, and gals, and whoever is watching, have a great rest of the day, evening, morning, afternoon, whatever time it is, whenever you are watching this and with whatever you are drinking. Cheers, and have a good one. Thanks for watching.